Media Ceremony of 2019. What a beautiful day, oh, huh? First, I'd like to start off. I'm Tim Searles, I'll be your Master of Ceremonies. I'd like to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, and leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance is the Boy Scouts of America, front and center. Chaplain Bill Morin. Almighty God, our sons and daughters, pride of our nation, that served, fought, and died so that we may be free. How truly immortal are those who give their lives for liberty. Blessed are those whose blood is shed for the welfare of our fellow men. Amen. You may be seated. Next, I'd like to introduce the welcome Manchester Veterans Council Commander Dan, Dan Bellabo. Well, welcome to another World Day ceremony. A little better weather this year than last year, isn't it? Yeah! I'm really honored to be here today, and I'd like to welcome our mayor, Joyce Craig. <laughs> Senator Maggie Hassan. <laughs> Congressman Chris Pappas. <laughs> and State Senator Luke D'Alessandro. Our Grand Marshal this year is Emil Ouellette, the State Commander for the American Legion. And we have several guests from the Department of New Hampshire officers. As we gather here today, let us reflect upon those moments when the first American soldier was killed during the Revolutionary War through the many years since, and now today, also including the Afghanistan war. President John F. Kennedy once said, a nation reveals itself not only by the men and women it produces, but also by the men and women it honors, the men and women it remembers. And so today, we remember our friends, and they were our friends, whether we, you knew their names or not, because they died knowing that by doing so, they would give the rest of us a chance to raise families, build careers, and carry the torch of freedom in these United States. Over the 243 years since the founding of our nation, the core purposes of our conflicts has always tended towards upholding the highest ideals of humankind to safeguard freedom, to protect democracy, to oppose tyranny. Never has the aim of our soldiers or sailors or airmen been the attainment of riches or land. And they have done so at a very high cost. Those who fought in these American conflicts from the Revolutionary War through Afghanistan came from all walks of life. They had the same worries, flaws, and frailties of any other American, of any other generation. Yet their selflessness at the darkest of times set them apart for eternity in our nation's memory. They committed to a higher purpose, to their fellow comrades, and to us. They changed this nation and our world together. To many, this is personal. 
Some of us here today may have lost loved ones who served the nation. Fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, colleagues, friends, or neighbors. In this moment of quiet reflection, we honor the 1,100,000 Americans who have lost their lives in war for us. Please observe a moment of silence with me in their honor. Thank you. I would like to introduce our mayor, Joyce Craig, to welcome you all. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you, and I just want to thank Tim and Dan and everyone who organized this wonderful event. I also am uh, thrilled to be here with Senator Hassan, Congressman Pappas, and Senator D'Alessandro. Thank you for being here as well. I'm honored to be here with all of you to pay respect and to honor those who selflessly served our country. To all the veterans and anyone actively serving in our military, I'm grateful for your dedication and your commitment to our country. You are an inspiration to us all. Memorial Day is a solemn day. We pause and remember the soldiers, airmen, and Marines who made the ultimate sacrifice. It's a time to reflect and to honor these great American heroes. I'm proud to be mayor in a city that has so much of a rich history in honoring those in our military and the legacy of honoring the men and women in this community who made the ultimate sacrifice to protect our freedom, our liberty, and our way of life. It's fitting that we're gathered together at Veterans Park, the place in our city that serves as a memorial for our veterans of World War I, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and World War II. There are also trees that are specifically dedicated to Manchester citizens who fought and died in Iraq. And thanks to the Manchester Veterans Council, there are new benches and, a, and flagpoles for each branch of the military. It's the perfect place to be to reflect on the service of our American heroes. There are also multiple parks, bridges, and schools across our city that are named for residents of Manchester who served our country. For example, Calibas Park is named after Christos Calibas the first Greek American from Manchester who died in World War I. Bronstein Park is named after Dr. Ben Richard Bronstein, who died aboard the USS Jacob, which was sunk off Cape May in 1942. And Gosler Park School is named after Herman Gosler, who perished in the Ardeen Forest in World War II. These men, and thousands of other men and women, dedicated their lives to keep us safe. I hope these reminders spread across our city, make it clear to you that Manchester is proud and grateful for those who serve. On this Memorial Day, I'm honored to be here with all of you in Veterans Park to remember, to pay respect, and to reflect on the sacrifices made by so many to provide freedom for all. I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to all the servicemen and women and their families who have given so much. Our freedom and opportunity comes with great sacrifice, and we must never forget. Thank you. So I'd like to introduce our Grand Marshal, Emil Ouellette. Emil Ouellette served in the Army as a specialist during the uh, Vietnam War, 1965 to 1968. He's owned a uh, floor refinishing business for 34 years before retiring. He's a member and past commander of the Derry American Legion Post, and he is currently the commander of the New Hampshire Department of New Hampshire American Legion. Please welcome Emil Ouellette. Good afternoon, everybody. Get your paperwork out. You know, there are many things you can take out of, out of this planet, but you can take it with you whenever you go. Consensus of duty faithfully performed. This is the way of the military, where that duty requires soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen to put their lives on the line. The men and women who gave their lives in service of this nation are indisputable heroes. 
When their country called, they answered. Some volunteered and some were drafted. But no matter how they found their way into the ranks of the military, each took it upon him or herself to serve faithfully and to the fullest. This is commendable in a nation where so, so few among us, among our citizens, have donned the uniform and accepted the inherent risk, and this alone makes them heroes worthy of remembrance. I would ask as you leave here and go about the rest of your day to keep the fallen in your minds and keep their families and friends in your heart. For it is their immense collective sacrifice that has helped our country be safe and free. Until they stood, united they stood and united they sacrificed. From the American Revolution to our current operations against terrorism, one million American men and women have made the supreme sacrifice while serving in wars and conflicts. We honor all of them, not just those with the highest medals or the heroes who fought the most famous battles. They all died, so we can't continue to cherish the things that we love, freedom, country, and family. This is why we are gathered here today on Memorial Day, to honor the memory of our fallen warriors who have given everything for their country. We are also reminded on this day that in each generation, brave men and women will always step forward to take the oath of allegiance as members of the American Armed Forces, willing to fight, and if necessary, die for the sake of freedom. Fingers aren't working. <clears throat> and we want to be there for their families long after the battlefield guns have been silenced and the bomb stopped exploding. The children of our fallen warriors will still be a missing parent, missing a parent. Spouses will continue to miss their life partners. Parents will never stop grieving for the heroic sons and daughters that died way too early. We need to be there for them. Nobody can replace their fallen heroes, especially in the eyes of their family. You know, when I was reading this, writing this, or reading it, and I, I was reminded of the story of on Memorial Day many years ago, as I was reading the poem to the crowd, I, don't, I can't even remember what the poem was, but there were a couple of lines in the poem, and it said, a daughter will walk down the aisle alone. And another verse in the poem was, and there'll be an empty chair at a holiday celebration. That came out in, his, in the ceremony. Well, after the ceremony, this gentleman approached me and he double, double hand shook me and he said, thank you. And I asked him, I said, why are you thanking me, sir? He says, my daughter was married three weeks ago. I said, and when you said those lines, I, it hit me with such emotion. He said, I couldn't imagine my daughter walking down the aisle by herself. What would she be going through thinking that my father isn't here with me? And as he said that, he walked away and thank you. But I thought about it too, and I said, wow, that was pretty moving. As Americans, we should all remember that freedom isn't free. It's only possible because our fallen heroes have paid its high price. A price paid which enables us to have ceremonies and observances like this in the communities across the country. On behalf of myself and the New Hampshire American Legion, thank you for acknowledging our 100th birthday. Thank you for great officials, the wonderful city of Manchester, Mayor Craig. <coughs> uh, oh, where are you? Senator Hassan, Congressman Gaffney, Senator Lou. Thank you all. Women of uh, men, citizens of Manchester, thank you. Let us always remember those not with us today. May we never forget. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our next speaker has been here several times. You all know her as former governor. She's currently Senator Maggie Hassan. Thank you, Dan, for the introduction, and thank you and Tim and everybody 
who organized today's parade and this event. It is also wonderful to be here with our Grand Marshal. Thank you for those words. They were terrific. And with Mayor Craig, Congressman Pappas, Senator D'Alessandro. Most importantly, it is so wonderful to be here with all of our brave and dedicated service members, veterans, and their families. We come together on Memorial Day with parades and special ceremonies just like this one to honor the generations of brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our country. These were our fellow Americans who put on our country's uniform and traveled far from home, knowing the risks that would lie ahead of them. They were patriots who gave their lives because they believed in the strength and the promise of our nation. They sacrificed so all of us would have the opportunity to be safe, to work hard and pursue our dreams in peace and prosperity. And because of their sacrifices, our country is safer and our freedom is stronger. Those fallen heroes showed us what it means to love and sacrifice for country. We owe them a debt of gratitude that can never truly be repaid, but it's a debt we always have to strive to honor. And we also come together to express our sympathies and offer support to the families and friends of the brave souls we memorialize. We understand that the pain of that loss is constant and it is with you every day. And we honor all of our veterans and service members who have followed in our fallen heroes' footsteps. It's our job in New Hampshire, in Manchester, in our country, to keep working every day to ensure that our veterans have the care and support that they need and they have earned. We stand here today because of the sacrifices of so many throughout our nation's history and you've heard mention of them already. Next week, as we mark the 75th anniversary of D-Day, I will travel to Normandy with a bipartisan congressional delegation to honor this solemn commemoration. There are few more powerful reminders of the loss of war than standing on the beaches of Normandy. And that will also help us focus and remind us of the bravery and sacrifice of every single member of our armed forces. I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to travel to those shores to honor the brave souls we lost. We owe those heroes and all who came before them and after them a debt of gratitude that we can never repay. But on Memorial Day and every day, we have to strive to uphold the ideals that they valiantly fought for, the ideals of freedom, liberty, justice. I want to thank everyone here for taking time today to honor these heroes. And as we reflect on those who gave their lives for their country, let us also take time to remember that our country is today still at war. And we need to all take a moment to hold in our prayers and hope for the safe return of every single one of our warriors who are in harm's way. So God bless all of you. God bless Manchester and New Hampshire and the United States of America, the greatest country on earth. Happy Memorial Day. Our next speaker, everyone here knows, hails from Manchester, our newest congressman, Chris Pappas. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dan, for the introduction. It is great to be here with you to commemorate this Memorial Day at a point in time in our history where it's important that we can maintain our sense of uh, common purpose as a country and remind ourselves what this country is all about. And I think we can do that today. Thank you to Senator Hassan, to Mayor Craig, to Senator D'Alessandro for being here. I joined the mayor and the senator earlier this morning up at the VA Medical Center, uh, where we heard the names of hundreds of veterans who were lost within just the last year 
from New Hampshire, and many of their family members were there to remember them. Those are just some of the heroes that we think of today as we remind ourselves about um, all those who have fought to protect this nation and to make it stronger. Um, it's an honor to be with you and be with um, many of our veteran advocates who are here today. Thank you to Mike Lopez, uh, to Tim Searless as well for organizing this event. I want to thank Commander Ouellette and the American Legion. They're just recently celebrating their 100th anniversary as an organization. They were founded just across the street in the old armory, which is part of the center of New Hampshire, uh, 100 years ago in the wake of World War I. And at that point, the men who gathered to ensure that veterans were taken care of in our community and across our state, I think had probably no idea the ways in which individuals would be called to serve this country in the ensuing century. Um, and from the beaches of Normandy, to Vietnam, to the hills of Afghanistan, Americans have answered the call and they have fought and died for the rest of us. And the work that the Legion does to take care of those who come home and make sure remember we remember those who don't um, is critically important for us as a nation. Today's a day of reflection, a day of prayer and a permanent peace. It's a reminder that the freedoms we cherish aren't free and that the lives we lead in the greatest country on earth are only possible because of the sacrifices of so many heroes. On this day, we're called to remember the heroes who didn't return home. And for every soldier who's lost, there's a family experiencing unimaginable grief in a community that won't ever be the same. And although we won't be able to fill the void of those who are lost, we gather today to pay tribute and ensure that those left behind know that the sacrifices of their loved ones were not made in vain. It's our highest responsibility to ensure that we look out for Gold Star families and support the brave men and women who returned home, never turning our backs on those who are willing to put everything on the line for us. And I think of, of all those veterans who are suffering uh, from mental health issues. We have a crisis of veteran suicide in this country where we lose 20 veterans each and every day in the United States of America. And those veterans are a casualty of war as well, and we can't forget them. It's also our responsibility to continue advancing the cause of freedom and ensuring America continues to be a beacon of hope and democracy for the rest of the world. That's why so many have laid down their lives for the, over the years. On this Memorial Day, I thank you for all the work that you do to strengthen our community, to support our veterans, and to remember those that we have lost. May their memories be eternal. May God bless the fallen and the United States of America. Thank you all so much. Our next speaker, you all know if you've been to past ceremonies here, Lou Delisandro is always be, can always be counted on to come to our ceremonies. Come on up, Lou. First of all, uh, thank each and every one of you for showing up. Like that, that's the courtesy that you have given to every member who served us in the armed forces of the United States. Thank you, each and every one of you, because we all owe what we have to those men and women who gave their lives in our defense. To Mike Lopez, who's been the, uh, the champion here, what, for 100 years, Mike? <laughs> for at least the last 100 years, thank you, Mike. To the members of Sweeney Post, thank you. I want to tell you about two boys, both close to me. One boy, Frankie Sherrett, passed in Vietnam. He was 18 years old. I see his mother downtown. I look her in the eye, and I see the great loss that she has suffered. That boy who could have done so much, could have been so great, was lost in the conflict in Vietnam. A mother's grief is never satisfied. She lives with that for the rest of her life. But her boy gave something Man. to us. He gave his life so that we could live well. Al Page, my teammate at the University of New Hampshire, was a pilot, flew many missions in Vietnam. He's an MIA. I would meet with his parents who would never see their son again, who would never know what happened to their son. He's lost, lost forever. 
but lost doing something for us, flying mission after mission after mission so that we could be safe. How important is that to each and every one of us? And I think of Angelo Manning, the quarterback at Manchester Memorial High School, great athlete, served in the United States Marine Corps, came back from Vietnam, courageous, was a tunnel rat, gave everything for, for us, served those ex that extra duty, but came back, worked in the Postal Service here, just a great, great American. This is Manchester, this is New Hampshire, these are men who served us, who did so much for us that we must never forget. We can never forget those who did so much for us. So again, thanks for coming. Remember, that's the key issue. Never forget those who have done so much for you, for me, for our state, for our city, and for our country. And to each and every one of you, have a great, great American day. Thank you. speech a little like usual. All right. Next, I'd like to introduce the mayor, Joyce Craig, and the department commander of the American Legion, Emil Ouellette, to lay the wreath of the city of Manchester. So what's going to happen is they're going to lay the wreath center part. The sweet pose two is going to fire the volleys and then taps going to follow along with the American, along with the national anthem. If you're in uniform, salute the flag. If you're not, put your hand over your heart. Attention, present arms.
Almighty God, grant them, Heavenly Father, eternal peace. Embrace them and release them into thy kingdom. Let the living not forget the price they paid for our freedom. Blessed are thou those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who fought and died, for they shall be remembered. Amen. I'd like to thank, there's so many people to thank that makes this um, parade go off in the ceremony. Uh, the band did a wonderful job again. Definitely the pride of our Manchester school system. All the speakers for all their inspiring words. Our Grand Marshal, the American Legion Firing Squad, and all of you people for attending. Um, I'm reminded that on Thursday at 11 o'clock, there's a ceremony at the State Veterans Cemetery in Boscoin. It's going to be very crowded and there's minimal parking, so if you want to get there and you want to see it, you'll want to get there early. And that closes our ceremony. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thanks all of you for what you do for your city. Great job.